You found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends. You're with Missy and Gwen. Mm. Good morning, Gwen. Good morning. So where are we going today? Well, you know what? We I love going through Psalm 103, but I thought yesterday's uh, program was a perfect segue into Psalm 119. Mm. You know, we talk a lot about God's Word here, and yeah. I know people go, oh, Psalm 119, it's just the same thing. No, 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 there's there's nuggets. Believe me, oh, listeners, there are so, nuggets so of some wonderful verses in Psalm 119, so we're yeah. going to look at it. And, and hopefully we'll get through it by the end of the week. But and, if not, and Missy, I want to talk about my first exposure to Psalm one nineteen. Okay, because um, what was going on in my life is I was wanting to learn how to connect with God, and my walk with God had felt like um, I, I felt like I was a Christian probably, but I had never felt a connection to God. I'd never seen God move. Never experienced Him. And somebody somewhere at some point said that if you want to learn how to pray and connect to God, read a psalm every night mm. and pray it. Try to pray like you're seeing. Try to copy what you see, what the, the writer's doing. And I will tell you, that is one of the most amazing things I've ever done in my life. Mm, that's cool. Is I literally took a summer, and I think I read three to five psalms every night. And I literally, whatever I connected to, I prayed back to God. Whatever applied, I switched the wording around and prayed it right back to him. Yeah. You know, and whenever I saw David get real, I copied it and I got real. But then I got to Psalm 119. And by the time I got to Psalm 119, I had started to taste mm. what this talks about. Yeah. And so I was starting to get it. And I'll tell you, once I was starting to get it and I walked into this, I was just... There was just some sweet spots in here that I was like, yep, 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 got it. <laughs> and, and it just was an amazing passage for me. It ended up, ended up being, at that point, my favorite psalm. That is so cool. I, I love Psalm 119. There's parts of it that are so, so familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is really long, that's true. But each and every verse, I mean, there's just so much in this. It's so incredible. And if we could read it in the original language, it would probably be even more beautiful to mm -hmm. me. Um, and understand it. because of the, Yeah, and, <laughs> and understand it because of the poetry and all the yeah. things involved. But uh, I love that. I love that we can look at this, and and as we dig into it, we can see, oh, just how sweet His Word is and what it does for us. So we're just going to jump right in. So why don't you start? Okay, I'll read 1 through 8, Missy, Okay, um, which is the first little stanza. stanza. Okay. Yeah. How blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. How blessed are those who observe His testimonies, who seek Him with all their heart. They also do do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. You have ordained your precepts that we should keep them diligently. Oh, that my ways may be established to keep your statutes. Then I shall be, then I shall not be ashamed. And when I look upon all your commandments, I shall give thanks to you with an uprightness of heart. Then I will learn your righteous judgments, and I shall keep your statutes. Do not forsake me utterly. Mm. I mean, his word has the ability to help you walk upright. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just amazing to me that, that it, it can give you enough foundation. And um, it's, it's almost like I can see someone stooped over with the weight of the world, and, but, but getting into, into his word just lifts you up. You know, to yeah. keep going forward. It establishes you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we're probably going to see the theme of seeking God with your whole heart. Mm. You're going to see walking in His ways. Um, you're going to see obedience. You're going to see, you know, a lot of these key pieces just repeated over and over. But then, like, I love how the author just kind of breaks in the middle of this and goes, oh, that my ways would be established to keep your statutes. Mm. It's as if he just can't contain himself. Yeah. when he. And I, I feel the same way sometimes when we talk about God's Word and, yeah. and how, oh, it's, it's just an amazing thing. It's an amazing gift. And if you... If you will allow yourself to get into God's word and recognize it for truly what it is, God's love letter to you, you will you will feel the same kind of excitement as yes. you think about what that truly means. And, you know, I th if, if you listen to Christians, sometimes we talk weird, but it's truly, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. Truly. 
Yeah. You know, to the outside world, that sounds weird. And if, you know, if you're listening and you're not grown up in church, our language might sound weird on that. But experience this. It's get in this word. Yeah. Ask God to show himself to you. Yeah. Like, seek after him. Ask him, like, literally. Like, my prayer that whole summer was, God, show me your face. Yeah. I'm seeking you. I'm doing what your word says. I'm going to try to obey it as hard as I can. But I'm going to seek as much as I can in any way I can. Yeah. And you promised to show up, so I'm watching for you. Yeah. So we're yeah. Yeah. So let and me see you. It was kind of like I tested what I found in here. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, and so this was one of those verses that I saw again. You know, of just that that whole thing of seeking God with all your heart. Mm, I love it. I love it. Well, let's go on to okay. some of those things that you mentioned. Verse nine says, "How can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word?" With my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Oh my goodness, when this whole passage, I mean, you think about this, and if if you don't have the solid belief that God's word is our authority, which you talked about yesterday, it, you you might just read these words and they're just words. But when you understand that God's word will keep you from the wrong path. God's word will keep you on the path he wants you to be on. That God's word transforms us. And really, truly, do you rejoice in his word more than all riches? I I feel like very few of us can say that. We certainly can't say that all the time. Yeah. But that's my desire, to, to be more in love with God's word than anything else. And I love verse 11. The, the one word was different than what you wrote, read. It says, your word I have treasured in my mm, heart. I and I it. love that word treasured there because that's kind of the idea of I'm going to take it and I'm going to hoard it, yeah. but I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. I'm going to recognize yeah. its worth. I'm going to review my, I want to look at it. You yeah. know, if I have pretty jewelry in a jewelry box, I'm going to want to open that jewelry box quite a bit yeah. and look at the pretty stuff and wear it. And, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, tr- the stuff I treasure is going to get my time and attention. Well, and one of the things I did with the Psalms, um, is that I, I went through and I circled all of the I wills as mm. in God's promises. Well, God's got promises. So there's mm-hmm. God's I wills, but but the psalmist's I wills. Oh, yeah, in other words, it's the choices that he makes. He determines that he is going to act in a certain way. And it's yeah. really interesting. I kind of challenge you to do that because as you read through the Psalms, you recognize how many times the psalmist, whether that's David or one of the other psalmists, sets their heart and mind to do something. Something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so even in just these few verses that we that we read, um, you know, you 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 look at this and it says, well, it's not I will, but I have sought you. Your word I have hidden. Um, with my lips I have declared, I have rejoiced. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, I will meditate. Mm -hmm. I will delight myself. I will not forget your word. So it's choices of the heart. And I love kind of finding those in scripture and recognizing for myself, it's a matter of what I'm going to choose to do. And the posture that you take. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And if you model the posture of the person writing, yeah, you can't go wrong. Yeah. You know, I'm going to pick up in verse 17 because I I love that right after he makes all those I will statements, Mm -hmm. then he says, deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your law. I am a stranger on the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is crushed with longing after your ordinances at all times. You rebuke the arrogant and the cursed who wander from your commands. And take away reproach and contempt from me, for I observe your testimonies. Even though princes sit and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Your testimonies are also my delight. They are my counselor. You know, in our culture, I'm just thinking verse 23 should really resonate with us. Princes also sit and speak against me. Um, There's a lot of things in our culture, in today's culture, in our world here, in in this North American climate here, where 
where people will speak against what we're saying. Through Facebook or through, uh, I mean, I just, yeah. just, you can just look at our world and yeah. see that it is going in a direction that does not align with God's word. So we are going to be called upon, I think, at times to speak his word, his truth in love. And we may be tempted not to speak it. Now, speaking it moments. in love, uh, let's put those two yeah. together because that's very, 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 very important. But you can... You can stand in the belief and the promise of his word, and you can share it without taking your Bible and beating somebody over the head with it. Right. The, without matching yes. the, the, the emotion that's coming at you. Yes. Because there, I mean, I think the biggest thing that's changed, I think, that I've noticed is the visceral reactions of people. Yeah. And how they, it, it you feel attacked. Yeah. You know, when they disagree with you, like they vehemently just go at you and lay into you sometimes. And so, you know, I think that's going to happen more and more. Yeah, I have a feeling. You know, and I think as believers, we're going to have to find gracious ways to walk through that and still speak up. Absolutely. You know, and look for your moment where you have listening ears. Mm. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Gwen, that we have to... We what we do and what we say has to be done in graciousness and love, and that that can't come from us humanly speaking. There's no way. Yeah. If somebody is coming at you viciously, you if you the kind of response that you need has to come from the Holy Spirit Himself. It has to. You have to be a vessel of God's love toward that person. Uh, so you, we're going to be faced with choices that may be difficult, but I think recognizing it now and preparing ourselves to have an answer. Yeah. And to season our speech with grace and love is going to be extremely important in the coming days. Well, it's time for a break. We're going to come back and get into more of Psalm 119. Thanks for joining us here in the Circle of Friends. Grab your car keys and round up your squad. It's the perfect time of year for a one-tank trip. Nestled among the rolling hills of Ohio's Amish country, Village Gift Barn, Country Gatherings, and the Gardens are must-see sister stores that are right next door to each other. We carry one-of-a-kind finds and pride ourselves on delivering good old-fashioned customer care for a wow experience. Customers often call our stores hidden gems. Stop by and find out why. Why? Three destination stores, one convenient location, Village Gift Barn, Country Gatherings, and the Gardens at 4755 State Route 39 in Berlin, Ohio, in the heart of Ohio's Amish country. John Piper once wrote, The ultimate reason why we are sexual is to make God more deeply knowable. Do you believe that? Do you even know what it means to connect your spirituality with your sexuality? I'm Dr. Julie Slattery from Authentic Intimacy, and I'm coming to the Amish Country Theater in Berlin, Ohio, for an all-day women's conference on February 22nd. We'll spend the day talking about God's design for sexuality. So whether you're single or married, 18 or 80, head to AuthenticIntimacy.com slash event for your ticket.
Welcome back to the table. You're sitting with Missy and Gwen, and we've been working our way through Psalm 119. I don't know if we're going to finish this before Friday. But, yeah, probably but not. I'm having fun just working our way through it. Yeah. So um, I, let's pick up in verse 25, and we'll just keep reading. Sounds great. Um, how about if I go ahead and read this one? My soul cleaves to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have told of my ways, and you've answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts so that I will meditate on your wonders. My soul weeps because of grief. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove the false way from me. Mm. Ah, love that. And graciously grant me your law. I have chosen the faithful way. I have placed your ordinances before me. I cling to your testimony. Oh, Lord, do not put me to shame. I shall run in the way of your commandments. For you will enlarge my heart. Wow. I love that, how to remove the falseness and to choose the way of truth to, I mean, to recognize that in and of ourselves, we would would go in a selfish way without God's help, right? I mean... I don't oh, think yeah. I'm the only person that no. would be that way. No, but, uh, but for I can, the grace of God, go I. Yeah, I can, I can see that as just a matter of how the flesh wants yeah. the fleshly things of the flesh. I mean, the selfishness that's involved in that. And, uh, and to be, you know, I would find myself all-consuming. It would be all about Missy. And I'm, I confess to you that there are moments when I recognize that in myself that it still, it still yeah. happens, even though I don't want it to be that way. So we all battle with that. But I, I, I love that he's recognizing that that way is false. That's not the best way to go. The yeah. best way to go is, the go is to go God's way, the way of truth. Um, and he, he relies on his word to show him that way. You know, I remember this part because I remember what the psalmist is doing in this part. He's aligned himself with what he's supposed to do according to God's word. Yeah. And then he's looking at God going, okay, I'm waiting for you to do your rest, do yeah. the rest. Yeah. I'm waiting for you to show up your, show your faithfulness. Yeah. You know, he says, I've chosen the faithful way. I've placed your ordinances before me. I cling to your testimonies. Oh Lord, don't put me to shame. Mm, I love that. Don't put me to shame. Yeah. And what does God do? He enlarges his heart. His heart. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Verse 33 says, Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Incline your heart to my... Incline my heart to your testimonies, and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. Establish your word to your servant who is devoted to fearing you. Turn away my reproach, which I dread, for your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. Make me walk in the paths of your commands, for I delight in it. I, you know, I think that's something that's missing a lot. Yeah. Um, is people have lost the delight of reading God's word and walking in his commands. We've lost the the delight of tasting God hmm. and and experiencing him as his goodness. I you know. Yeah, you know, the the next little stanza is, is kind of cool because it talks about um how we can trust in God's word. Verse 41 says, Let your mercies come also to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in your ordinances. So shall I keep your law continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. Isn't this amazing? I will speak of your testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. I mean, he's just saying, this is the way, folks. This is what I want. This is what I want my life to be about. And when I when I give myself over to the authority of God's word, and I... I you do fall in love with it, I think, yeah. the more time you spend in it. And you allow it to transform your heart and life. And that's what's happening with the psalmist. Yeah. You know, previously when my best friend came in yeah. and sat at the table with us, and we were talking about just her her 
um, just our journeys and yeah. how they intertwine in our friendship and, and how our growth and our walks with God kind of combine. Um, she was just sharing about how she just loves God's word. She gets in and she gets so excited and, yeah. you know, and how she just finds so much good stuff in there to just devour. Um, and that sometimes she's in there for two hours before she realizes how long she's been in there. Yeah. Um, and I love that. That's exactly what this is talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, it's that, it's that kind kind of love for God's word. Mm. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick up in 49. Um, Remember the word to your servant, which you have made uh, me hope. This is my comfort and my affliction, that your word has revived me. Missy, that that verse Mm. slays me, but I'm going to keep going and then we'll come back to it. The arrogant utterly deride me, yet I do not turn aside from your law. I have remembered your ordinances from of old, O Lord, and comfort myself. Burning indignation has seized me because of the wicked, who forsake your law. Your statutes are my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. O Lord, I remember your name in the night and keep your law. This has become mine, that I may observe your precepts. Hmm. You can just feel that this writer is going through something. And I just, this whole little section is so, it just steals my breath away. Um, Just that my comfort and affliction is this, that your word has revived me. We've all had moments where we have just a burning indignation that seizes us because of something wicked that we've seen or experienced. Mm. or You know, we all have had those moments. And here it is, right right in God's Word, talking about that. Well, if you can't connect with that, you know, who are you? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, like, once you get in here, you find yourself in the pages. You find yourself in your experiences. So, so true. Well, let's go on here to... Verse 57, you are my portion, O Lord. I have said that I would keep your words. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful to me according to your word. I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you. Because of your righteous judgments, I am a champion of all who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. I love this idea of changing direction. Um, I thought about my ways and turned my feet. Uh, I made haste. I, I come running back to you, Lord. When I recognize that I'm not on your path, I run to you. I change my direction. I run to you. I run to your word. And I can depend on it being there for me. I mean, that's pretty exciting stuff. You know what sticks out for me is actually this um, this image of uh, God being our portion. Um, and I wanted to kind of cross-reference to Psalm 16, verse 5. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup. Mm. You support my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. Wow. I I love the idea of God is my portion. Yeah. You know, and then that kind of, most places it kind of talks and eventually talks about like your boundaries have fallen in pleasant places. Yeah. Like something about territory or, you know, kind of almost like inheritance. Yeah, I, I do love kind that. Of attaches with that at times. Um, but I just, I don't know, a, a year or two ago, that idea that God is my portion, that it's mine, that it's allotted to me. Um, I don't know. There's something about that that just yeah. kind of hits and resonates. Well, it, it I mean, he, he is our inheritance. It's, it just proves that we're part of his family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, once again, we are his child, and these are the things that come to us as his child. That's pretty incredible what he's blessed us with and what we have. And, you know, that verse um, that I read earlier, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful. Mm -hmm. When um, the house I'm remodeling, my grandmother grew up there Mm. and and, uh, several other family members. And so when we gutted the house, this is one of the verses that I wrote above my doors. Oh, that's so cool. Is that, you know, just my heritage is beautiful to me. Yeah. Because it and the interesting thing, when we tore apart walls, we had holy mice. 
<laughs> because they evidently had found a Bible and made a home out of a Bible, oh you know, and then they just, there just was a lot of sweet things I found when we opened up walls and stuff like that, that oh, just reminded cool. me that this house was more of a heritage than I realized. Like oh. faith had been a heritage and a part of my yeah. family. Yeah. Um, for the family that held this. It was just a real sweet moment. Anyway. Oh, that's pretty cool. Tangent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, rabbit trail. Yeah, there uh, we go. Squirrel. Uh, <laughs> verse, 60, <Any> object. <laughs> verse 65 says, mm-hmm. You have dealt well with your servant, mm-hmm. O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Mm-hmm. But now I keep your word. This is one of those nuggets, and we'll come back to it. Yeah. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Another gem. <laughs> yeah. Verse 72, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Um, I remember reading uh, verse 71 and also verse 67 uh, about being afflicted Mm -hmm. and seeing good, there's good in that. It's like, yeah, that's a new thought for some of us. Like, how is it good for me to be afflicted or to have challenges or to have trials Mm -hmm. or to go through difficult times? How can that be a good thing? But verse 67 says, before I went through that hard time, I went astray. But now, because I've allowed you to work in and through the trial, I keep your word. And verse 71, it is good for me that I've been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. When I'm afflicted, when I have a trial, I am much more likely to be totally dependent on God rather than myself. And Missy, I want to read the next section because of verse 75, which piggybacks right to that. So, you know, I I think we have like a minute left. So let me, um, you know what? Let me just read 75. Um, I'll just skip to that. Oh Lord, I know that your judgments are righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted Mm. me. May your loving kindness comfort me according to the word, your word to your servant. The idea that in my affliction, he is faithful and he comforts. Yeah. Listeners, I don't know where you're at, but if you are in affliction, your soul feels afflicted, take heart because sometimes he puts us there for our good. Mm -hmm. Um, And his promises and his word are the things that will sustain you and revive you. You found a place to belong here in the Circle of Friends. This program was brought to you through the generous support of donors and listeners like you. To contact Circle of Friends Ministries, you can write to P.O. Box 345, Berlin, Ohio, 44610, or find us on Facebook at circleoffriends.fm. Program archives can be found at thelight959.com.